That's right. We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to go ahead. We're going to build a winch for the bed of this truck. Removable too. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get started. <laughs> So pretty much what we're going to be doing in this episode, and I know it's not chainsaw, but lifting up wood is definitely not something I like doing larger rounds and stuff like that. So what we're going to end up doing is taking angle, which I bought, and then I've got some bed frames, which work just as good, but I'm going to take some angle, some flats, and we're going to go from points over here to points over here and mount the winch to where it can be centered and offset. That's the theory, today's goal, at least this video's goal. So the winch in hand, and I got it, you know, discount and everything, and I have verified it does work. Don't know if it has a shackle because I never looked that far, but I don't care. And mount it so it's upright and everything, but it's removable. So I've got a, another future thing to come home, and I gotta load to the bed of this truck, and I don't wanna get a trailer, and it's just this will just be something that could be used for other purposes like say you know wood if i want to drag it up into here or you know a motorcycle a tv stuff like that so i figured it's time to go ahead and do something like this so 2500 pound utility winch a couple pieces of six foot angle to go across the bed they'll actually have to be cut down a little bit tie them together with this, the flat and everything. So let me get a visual set up here, a better visual, and then we'll go from there. So, and these are gonna be angled, turned. So they'll be 90, so they'll be flat surfaces to bolt the winch onto, and they will be cut down to fit on the inside. And then they'll be angled up here and going down to help eliminate any movement and possibly as you can see, this is taking a few bumps. Bolt it to the back here somehow and uh, help secure it even better. But that's kind of the plan right there to build something just like that. So we've got to make our way to the garage, which I cleaned out last week. It's probably set up saw horses, so I'm not bent over doing this. Get some precise measurements. And uh, we'll be drilling holes, to bolt it, and everything. So. That's the plan. Because I haven't found any real videos of exactly how people made these things and stuff. So I figured a DIY video for this would be great. And like I say, save your back on loading up heavier things like wood and whatnot. And I know they make other types of uh, hoists that can mount right here and lift up. And that's great. And it would be actually pretty cool for this and everything. But this is more of what I need for this future applications and stuff. So, all right. Enough yammering. Let's uh, let's get to cutting and zapping things together, shall we? All right. So I measured between the bed and surfaces, and it's 65 and a quarter inches. Each one of these is 72 inches. Now I'm going to be using eighth inch steel angled to put on the ends of these, so that it hooks up to the bed like we talked about over and everything to bolt. So what that equates to is 65, and you got your eighth, and your eighth, which works out perfect to our 65 and a quarter, which is actually quite nice. So it should be a snug fit, and we'll tack stuff together and stuff before doing that. So what we're gonna have to do is hopefully, which I kind of have my doubts because I haven't done the math yet. We got our 65, uh, that's it's 59, because I'm dyslexic, I guess. 65, we cut that. And uh, that'll give us the extra distance that we, that's definitely not 72. Those are actually 71 and over, just over 71 and a half inches. So they definitely cut and ripped you off real bad on that. So, but anyways, we'll take that little extra length on each one of these and maybe we can use that for the ends to help tie together because we're also gonna brace it with the cut up angle. But I need to find out how wide my winch surface is to be able to put onto these. So we're gonna to have to get that out here real quick. 
and figure out our distance on everything. All right, so we've got a cool two mounting points for this winch. Awesome, unless I need to look in the box more for something. But we are at three and a quarter center on center, so three and an eighth. I can't hold still for my life today, and you guys probably can't see what I'm doing. Three and eighth inches in between hole to hole. So, should be more than enough steel to be able to do the job to hook end to end and then have a little hanging out extra each side depending on how I want to do this. So, that tells us everything we need to know. So, we're going to want to keep the terminals on the driver's side because I plan on using the truck's battery with jumper cables to be able to power this and everything. So it'll have to wrap around and go to the front under the hood and everything. So hopefully I got long enough jump cables. If not, you know, maybe an excuse to buy a nice little jumper pack or something like that. Cause I don't want to keep robbing the tractor of its battery. It's a pain to put in and out. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get these shortened here to the 65 inches we need. And then take it from there. Sorry about that crappy lighting. Outside light was coming in and making it difficult to see, so now we've got you pointing that way from the outside in. So, all right, this is upside down, and I don't know, you want to mount a winch like that, or? Not a good idea, no, because I don't want to cut into the steel or anything like that. I, think, I don't think it's going to matter too much, but upside down, and what's going to happen is I'm going to mark where the holes are going to be for this and kind of just get a distance and stuff like that, you know try to mark or whatever and stuff, but I decided I don't want to mount the flat steel that I'm going to cut on the outside of it. Rather, I can put it on the inside for a cleaner look, but if I want to slide this side to side or whatever, I don't have to do much lifting. I can just shh it over, but maybe I'm just going for that clean look. I'm overthinking that maybe, but also these terminals are a little close to the uh, steel. So it's upside down. I did verify 65 inches is good, and then, like I say, we'll put our quarters on the end. So, then what we'll end up doing is something like this right here. This right here. And welding it on, and then we'll bolt it through here and here to the bed, possibly another third one right there. And that'll go towards the force or whatever it wants to pull, so it helps prevent this from torquing. So when it ever it twists and everything. So like I say, imagine this is a, like I say, completely upside down or something. However, it's going to be mounted to the bed. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I don't know. And we'll have to cut out and clearance through here. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on, y'all. Ooh, it's my buddy. He does. He never calls. So be right back. All righty, we're back about mm, an hour later. And, uh, yeah, I gotta open the window back here and turn the fan on. I forgot about it. So, he just wanted to hang out for a little bit. And that was perfectly fine. I need to have some catch-up time. So, we work at the same place. We've known each other, like, 10, 11 years now. So, all right. So, anyways, I'm going to zoom in here with what's next on the plan. Because, let's face it, you know, still can't see anything with lighting. But... What we got to do is we've got to cut out the area where it's going to be on for the bed and everything. So the bed's going to have to sit in this area right here for this. Yo, know, so what we're going to do, cut it out a wee bit bigger. And we'll do that for both sides. Have to cut that out. And of course, cut it there so we're notching it. So if this can be there, that'll clearance the bed for that to sit on. That way. Yeah. 
and we'll have to put it like that now i'm thinking because that's got to go on the inside where we're planning so i'm going to notch it clearance it for that the thing you guys were telling me good thing so clearance that out for both sides we might actually be able to get away with only doing one depending on what side we're going to do actually so we can have more reinforcement because no no we'll still have to cut it out and clearance it yep damn so all right both of them out clearance that and then we'll do that for one side and we'll go ahead and we'll cut that out for the other this is where i wish i owned a plasma cutter they had them real cheap on ebay really good ones guys were talking great reviews about and well as you know me i didn't buy it so now i gotta get the chop saw back out here real quick and do a quick montage cut on both sides and then we can do some finalizing and everything of where things are going to sit and everything. Get the welder out, tack it, which of course you'll be there for that. And we'll go from there. Alrighty. So, quick little hyperlapse there. There's probably better ways to do this. I know there are. I ain't got one. <laughs> I don't have it. So. All righty. But we are clearanced out for this. And of course, that eighth of an inch extra on each side, because that extra quarter or whatever to the steel didn't really need. But that eighth of an inch gives us a little bit of play for whatever reason. So. We gotta think. Well, right now we're just measuring for width here on everybody and everything. Because wherever these holes are sitting, it'll sit the same on the top side, so. How does it look for you guys? I really, I'm really trying to get a good view for this, you know. The stand will cooperate. There we go. Looks about centered. A little bit extra and everything, so. Of course, we'll get the tape measure out, do official measurements, and everything will match up each side kind of half butt, because, you know. Try to hold by the job here, but it's just not how we are. Uh, could have been my crappy cut right there. Who knows? But angle grinders are poor, right? Right. No? We're gonna have to get the square out. That's kind of the idea right there. Just imagine it flipped over and that is pretty much on the bed. So let me uh, get my tape measure here. We'll make some measurements and then we will go ahead and tack weld, double check everything, how fitment in the bed's gonna look. And then we, if this is all correct, we'll be able to finish up doing some quick welds and everything. And of course that'll be another kind of half relapse thing and whatnot, but what all that, take you through the steps and the process and everything. Man, is it warm out here. I mean, it clouded over finally, but it got, it's still warm. So, carry water on you. So, all right, anyways, back to, uh, back to back and getting stuff. All right, so we are four and a half on the inside from inside face to inside face, just because, you know, it makes the winch happy, a little bit of space, so when it's on top, there'll still be plenty of space to be able to do stuff. So, And we'll be putting braces in here to help with any buckling and stuff like that and combine everybody together. So, All right, let's go ahead. Let's bust out the welder. At least get some stuff tacked out and everything and uh, make stuff happy here. What you say? <laughs> but 
you on the ground. No, I'm no professional welder, but they hold. Good. Ground it, check, check, check. All right. And of course, my welding gloves I left at my dad's house, too. So. But could you guys do me a quick favor while you're watching this? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, like, I really appreciate it. Moving the ground closer just so, you know. Maybe pretty cool to use the Macola welder. I heard somebody say it in the back, but loud, noisy, it's kind of uncontrollable when it comes to uh, a few things. Still getting used to this auto darkening helmet the wife got me. here. All right, that might be enough to uh, see what's going on here. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, go test fit it in the bed. All righty here. Here we go. It says all tack welded. Oh yeah. Yep. I overshot myself. That's okay, I can move those out real quick. Almost there. I messed up, but I'm willing to admit my mistake. So. Somebody was warning me about that. Yep, we can fix that though. That's an easy fix. I thought I could use that to my advantage. Yeah, I realized my mistake, but that's fine, it's easily fixed. So, leaving and coming back, yeah. I definitely had thought I had a mindset and everything and there was no need to cut that channeling out. Having it upside down didn't help. So, I see it now. I need to put that like that on the outside. So, all right, easy fix. And uh, as for these cutouts right here, hmm, we can always patch that. Like I say, you know what? I'm only human, right? I'll go ahead, get that welded up to the outside there, do the same for the air side. This is why it's important to tack weld your stuff. Don't just hard weld it at first. Get that welded up right like so. Lost my supports for there, but I'll, uh, I got all that flat steel just there to there and maybe actually try to make a gusset or something, stuff like that. We'll get it figured out. Welcome to be inhuman. As you can see, tack welded up, it fits. And my mess up, completely overthought this, so we'll get that fixed. So, all right, pretty much fix the mess ups and get her all welded up together. So, without further ado, I, another hyperlapse of everything, but, or I may just bring you back afterwards. But you can get to see the idea of what I'm talking about going on here.
Well, as you saw there, um, yeah, I've drawn too much on the circuit. I put it on number four setting, and it, uh, well, if I turned off the lights, it would have been fine, but I had all the lights on the fan and everything, so it was a little too much. Hit the breaker, so turned off the lights again, and that allowed me to finish up on three and stuff, but we're only well an eighth inch, so. All right, continue on. Alrighty. Well, after quite a bit longer, got the mess ups, unmessed up, I guess, if you want to call it. Might actually be stronger, who knows? Because it's thicker and everything, but. So, there's that. Got the braces put in evenly too, halfway and then half of half and stuff. So, so anyways, it's gonna sit on the truck like that because these are going towards the back. So this is how it's gonna sit. I'm gonna put that directly over the braces. So that is what we're going for. When it sits in the truck. I'll have to see if there's a fair lead in the box. If there is, then I'll uh, I'll definitely incorporate that into the setup. So, yeah! Thought about having the winch on the underside, but I keep it up on top just to, you never know. But that's the plan. So, now to get a pretty much a dead halfway here, we'll drill holes there. Maybe drill them there? And then we're over there. So, all right. I think I don't know if I want to end that for today, but we'll uh, we'll go ahead and we'll keep on going here. We'll get a look into. It. We'll get the drilled and everything, and uh, maybe mounted up this evening is starting to get a little dark out. So, and in all of its glory, I think I will put it all the way back. Plus, what it does for me is I can uh, for the side bolt here. I can reach inside there and put that one in. And then these top ones, they'll come in from the bottom, which I can easily access. So, I think see the back of the bed is bowed because something was loaded in here and thud. Used to have a camper shell on it, actually. That's how the uh, bed surface, you can see where it rubbed over time. There's a couple rust. So, alrighty. Alrighty, so got the holes drilled. So, access to everybody. So this is pretty much the final thing other than painting it. And I got to go over the entire thing with the flapper disc to clean it up. And we're going to just wrinkle black it like we did the welding cart. If you didn't see that video, go check that out. But, uh, so we're going to do that tomorrow because the mosquitoes are getting bad out here. And, uh, I'm pretty tired. Tapping fluid helps a ton. So, alright. So, bring you back when we're going to paint, and it'll probably be... Okay, it's the next day. Hot as can absolutely be outside. But thankfully, the shade of the garage, I've got that. So, we've got to mount up... Gotta get the sunscreen out of the uh, sun. Used it for welding yesterday. Gotta get the ferret lead mounted up. And I'm thinking, keep it simple, mount it up like this. I don't know how close it's got to be, but take a couple pieces of flat, weld it on up, up, and over to support each one. And that might be enough to, uh, to do the job for holding that. I mean, it doesn't have much of strain or anything too much on it. So, actually, I probably was right in the way for that one. So that this can mount through, be up there to where it can spool on and everything. So, since we know where this is final position is. And I found the hardware for that inside the box after I got to looking more. And it's 8 grade, so we'll have to drill out the holes a little bit more. And, uh, get that done. So, we'll go ahead and we'll continue on with this. And once we get everything done, we'll flap wheel it. And give her a paint job. And I'm thinking maybe... Not in the garage this time, but there's a swing set right there. I'll tell you, I can hang this from it. We'll be able to paint it from there. So I think that's a pretty stiff, great idea.
that little cutting welding montage there for the Fairlead holder. So as you can see, or maybe not, because you know, I'm a terrible cameraman. Fairly will go through here, well, our cable. And then there's the holes drilled for it. And to get the bolts in, we'll install this before we put the motor back on. So, and then that will be our little guide right there to life and everything. So there we are. So there's that. So now I gotta go over the entire thing with the grinder with the flapper disc and we'll go get it hung up, torch it all off to eliminate the oils and stuff on it, heating it up, and at the same time after that, we'll hit it with some paint. I think I've got some VHT, the wrinkle black, that I'm going to use. If not, then I'll go to the store and get some more. But that stuff is, that stuff's pretty good. Yeah, I've got a little bit left. So, this is the stuff. I like to use. So we use it on the welding card. It's pretty, pretty tough stuff. Might have some etching primer since this it might be mounted to the truck a lot more often out of the weather more. I'll take and find the etching primer. I know I've got a can of that and we'll go ahead and do that. But so get everything unmounted here, cleaned, the whole shebang. And we are finally down to everybody's favorite part, not mine, painting. So, the way we're going to do this, we're going to torch this whole thing to clean off any contaminants. But while it's hot, as can be, put the BHT wrinkle paint on there. So, pretty much. Pretty much that the entire time. So, we'll toss you back onto another hyperlapse here. And, uh... We'll spritz on the good stuff. The good stuff. And one thing I really like to do, I don't know if this is recommended and stuff, I like to just put one giant thick coat on. Probably not the best idea. Just depends on my mood. But I like to go through with the torch. And just really quick cure that paint on. Follow all directions on the can. And because I'm not a welder, I like to really hit in them ugly welds and it fills them in just really good, makes them look perfect. Keeps the water out for about two more days than normal before it starts really rusting out on you. Ah, beautiful smell, beautiful. Really hit it with the torch, heat her back up. Don't stay over too long or else you'll scorch it, all right? Remember, follow all the directions on the can. it up even if it doesn't wrinkle up too much that's fine yeah this is the side everybody's gonna see when they're following you so this has got to be a good looking side so, wrinkling up in some spots that's fine Like the back side here, you're never gonna see that. This side, totally mint. That's beautiful. And then you got some there and stuff. I don't know how well you guys can see it because you know, light is just terrible. Just to quick cure it, dry it, whatever we wanna call it today. So, all right. So, as soon as that's dried, we will get the winch mounted on. I did drill out the holes bigger for the uh, better bolts before doing this, obviously. And we'll get her mounted up and I'll figure out a power source. 
Okay, so we are just barely, about tripped and died there, barely hooked up to the battery. But, I gotta go wireless and everything. I have my wireless remotes in the house, but. So, of course tripod's back there, but we'll pull, pull this out. I ain't got nothing to pull into the bed at the moment. Just playing around here. Oh. Clutch. There we go. So, keep that nice and tight, just like that. So, all right. I wanna say thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this helps somebody with this design overall. Just bolts it in a couple spots. So, and I'll be taking this assembly off and it'll be kept in the truck and everything. And I'll get better connections than uh, that setup down there. So, all right. So, say thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, we're going to have more, uh, hopefully, more home brew builds and everything, but more Max Alls, small engines in the future, boat engines. Who knows? So, till then, thank you.